making the sorrowing glad <coughs> make me a blessing make me a blessing out of my life may Jesus shine Chapter 1, verses 2 through 9, and Hosea 14, 9. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom. For the land commits great whoredom by, forsake, by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Dibliam, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day I will break the bow of Israel on, in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Ruhamah. For I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by, by bow, nor by sword, or by war, or by horses, or by horsemen. Now which she had weaned Lorima, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Loami. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them. But transgressors stumble in them. I'd like to thank your chairperson, Sister Liz Fisk, uh, for this invitation to address this theme and the pastor of this great congregation for yielding his pulpit today. 
in looking at the theme for the Women's Mission Union, it's unshakable pursuit. And as you see in the bulletin, the message is the high cost of pursuit. And, and Sister Liz gave me some great WMU material. I'm like, this is good stuff. And then I looked at for February, the scripture, it said the book of Hosea. I said, okay. <laughs> So let me lace up my boots and pull out my knee pads and pray, look to God and lean into him and see which direction he would have us go, which word he would have for us with this, this passage of scripture, this book. The scripture identified by WMU in their guidebook, looking at Hosea is, is their reading. Romantically, we may immediately remember the story from the Bible of a prophet who marries a woman who's an adulteress and brings, him, brings her home, and we think of that kind of like a romantic story. Well, the text that was so superbly read by Jennifer Chotla this morning gives us a sobering insight into the high cost of pursuit. Descriptors of the word pursuit bring to mind for us this like going after something, really going to get it. We may in our minds, I imagine a chiseled athlete, not, not me, imagine a chiseled athlete postured and poised at the starting line, ready for the sound of the gun to go off, to go for the gold. Pursuit. Some of us may have disdain at the thought of the word pursuit because the reality for us as a family member, often traditionally a husband or a dad in pursuit of a dream, a career path, a position, posture, getting to the top of the ladder, such a great pursuit that we have been left attended to we have been unseen while another pursues a dream, pursuit. Immediately in this first chapter of Hosea, we see the costly effects of Israel having pursued other kings for provision and protection. They defile God's temple by allowing neighboring cultish religions to mix their lewd practices with the holy edicts of God. In chapter 1, verse 3, as Hosea is obedient to God, he marries Goma, the daughter of Diblim. Names are significant in the Hebrew scriptures, so I searched for a connection with Gomer's family name. No lineage was found. Only two uncomplimentary possibilities were two cakes or a cluster of figs which indicated corruption, decay, and uselessness. This was disheartening to read as I thought, there's no record of you. I can't get to know who your family is, but I know what you produced, Gomer. So with a bit more zeal, I looked for Gomer's name. Perhaps she was a good girl. Perhaps she was a church girl at one time. And she got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Perhaps she was a victim of her past and others who hurt her. I pursued, I dug. I looked for the good news story of Gomer. I didn't find it, so I stopped looking. Chapter 1, verse 4, the names of the children born to Hosea and Gomer bear the penalty of an unholy alliance that Israel made in pursuing other nations. 
Jezreel, God reaches back to 2 Kings when he had commissioned Jehu to kill the household of an unrepentant Ahab to avenge Israel's blood shed by Jezebel. We remember Jezebel. However, Jehu assassinated and slaughtered more people at Jezreel than God had sanctioned. He took, he took God's command and will and turned it to his own. So in verse 5, now we see in Hosea that God says, I will avenge Jehu and Jezreel, the name of the firstborn. And in the valley of Jezreel, I will completely destroy the armies of Israel. Picture this if you can imagine. This would be like God using our armed forces to wipe out all of the terrorist threats. And then in your backyard, you stand and watch God completely annihilate Fort Bragg. We can't imagine what that would be like. Jezreel, God says, I'll wipe out your enemies and then you'll see right in your own front yard everything at Fort Bragg wiped out. As Jennifer read, Gomer gave birth then to a daughter and named her Lo Rumahi. For God says, I will no longer show mercy to the people of Israel, but will completely take them away because of their sin. As Sister Bobby would certainly let us know, not their shortcomings, not their mistakes, their sin. When we become aware of a woman being beaten, beaten by her husband, we use the word nowadays abuse. Well, abuse is a sterile word. It's, it's a watered down word for those of us who don't have the stomach to face the cruel reality of what happens behind closed doors. But often we'll say to her, well, you need to leave. You just need to leave. And for love, maybe for hope, for fear, or for the sake of the children she stays, then one day we notice she's gone. Is she safe? We pray she's safe. We want to celebrate, I guess. Verse 9, a third child is born and named Loami for God pronounces the people of Israel are not his people. And he says, I am not their God. How final this sounds, like a gravel thump in a courtroom when a judge pronounces that this covenant between the two is no longer, you're divorced. And each of you are free to go your separate ways. There's no lingering tone when a gravel hits in a courtroom. It doesn't linger like a bell whose faint sound disappears in the distance. That judgment is like a thump, the sound of the closing lid on a casket when that top part grabs a hold of the bottom latch. God says to Israel, you're not my people. I'm not your God. How many times have we made good intention promises to God and to others only to hurt and disappoint them? You ever see the light go out in a little girl's face when somebody yet makes another promise to her and she knows daddy's not coming home. I won't get to play. Ever see that light go out? Looking at the three children in this text that's been read, we say among ourselves, how tragic. We may presumably calculate, well, three children, perhaps this was about a three year span of time. This went on for 30 years that God pursued Israel, begging Israel to do what's right, to walk in his ways. 30 years. 
at this time in their history. How long has God pursued us? How many times has God called our names? How many times has God come after us, pleaded with us? The language in Hosea in verse 10 after we read his pronouncements <clears throat> to Israel by naming these three children takes a whiplash, jolting, abrupt shift. God begins to speak of Israel in terms of his first promises to Abram back in the book of Genesis that the children of Israel shall be numbered as the sand of the sea. Now, anybody that knows anything about mood swings, anybody now? About mood swings? <laughs> See, these are mostly attributed to menopausal women going through what my grandma used to call the change of life. Now, some of you who are young don't know anything about that, but just keep on living. It's coming to a woman near you. <laughs> I mean, they happen immediately. And I, I remember just one time, something, and something was said. I mean, I was just, boom, 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 boom. and the only reason I stopped, because I was out of breath. And I was standing in front of Brother Carl like this, and he, and he was just looking like, where is my wife? Who, who is this woman? Yeah, immediately God's language turns. So I'm not at all suggesting that God is like a menopausal woman. But his great love for Israel, as soon as he pronounces this judgment, he says, oh, but Israel, once again, you will number like the sands of the sea. Oh, and by the way, I got medication, so Brother Carl's good. Don't feel sorry. <laughs> We're good now. Now, chapter 3, verse 1, likewise, we see here that Gomer leaves the home that God has provided for her through Isaiah, his prophet, and she finds herself back in the arms of another man. What made her leave? What made her leave? What enticed her? Who or what was she pursuing? How come, how come AA doesn't work for everybody? I mean, you think if you get your life straight, you, you go to church or something, things are okay. But, but she's, she's back out there again. How, how can your own child break proba probation and you put your house up for bond? How, how, does, how do these things happen? But God says to Hosea, go and love that woman again. If it were me, I said, hmm. I was lightning my straight, but I believe I'd say to God, hmm, I'm not going back out there after what she did to me. Of course, I'd be saying a him. I, I said, no way, God. But God says, go back out there and love that woman again. Not treat her like a charity case. Not give her the riot act and tell her what she deserves but love her again. And so Hosea goes looking for Gomer. First he stops by First Baptist Church where the women are having sex with the Canaanite and the Israeli men. That sounds odd. That's what was happening in Israel. The temple of God had become a place of prostitution. Can you imagine stopping by First Baptist and seeing the women having sex with the Israelites? But Hosea was looking for Gomer. Ah, that's tough for us to imagine, to hear, to think of. He walked up Hay Street. He went down Bragg Boulevard. He's looking for this woman. 
By the time he gets to the end of Cedar Creek Road, he sees his wife on an auction block. Hosea prays the price for her, which amounts to the fee that would have been paid for a common slave. Nothing of significant value. When she left, did she see this coming? Did she think she could just go back to the life she used to live and everything would be fine? Well, she's had three children now. Her body doesn't look the same. She's older. So she's not received so well. So there she is. Not where the other prostitutes are, but on an auction block to be sold of little value. And so page after page, chapter after chapter, hundreds of verses. The book of Hosea goes back and forth that you can see, feel about here the anguish of God like this massive ship on an ocean as it pitches and rolls with the wave. God loves Israel and he comes for her. He pursues her and then in judgment he stops. And then he turns and he comes for her again like this ship. Which words of worthlessness, guilt, and shame haunt us? What is the price God pays for us? God's pursuit of us is no more likened to this massive ship on a sea that moves with the waves. But now, because of Jesus Christ, his love is planted solidly on a hill called Calvary. There's no more tossing and going back and forth. The decision has been made. Jesus asked his father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, Lord, your will be done and not mine. So on that old rugged cross up on that hill, Jesus' blood saturated his body after being whipped with straps that stripped the skin off of his body. His arms stretched wide, bare, for all the world to see, Jesus died for your sins and mine. He pursued us to death. God, what a price to pay. What a pursuit. God says of us, we are of great value. When we come to the end of this book in verse 9, as Jennifer read, God concludes by saying, if we're wise persons, we'll learn from the mistakes of Israel. We'll learn from their sins. And God says, know this, my judgments are right. Good people follow after my ways. What a wonderful pursuit. A high cost. A high cost of pursuit. But my God, how valuable you are to him. Amen. This morning as we closed our focus on the WMU and look to the months ahead in 2020, may we pray the prayer of Reverend Archie Berenger, who prayed at the beginning of this year. Dear Lord, in the year 2020, 
give me a vision of accomplishment beyond my wildest imagination, the courage to strive for that which I do not think I can attain, a sense of the presence of God to help others who cannot help themselves, and to do it all for their good and your glory without any expectation of receiving anything in return except the silent sense of comfort and hope that only you can provide. Amen.